Here we are. <laughs> this is it. Hey, Refuge Live. Yes, the beginning. It's the first, right? The first of Refuge Daily yes. kicks off today. And uh, what's that? My mic is off. Sure. Right. We're going to turn Jeff's mic it's on because on. There it's we better, better for we you. Launch. We want you to hear him. That's right. So, uh, yeah, Refuge Daily begins today, and... And I already see we have some people watching here oh. online, so... Hey, welcome. There. Glad you're yeah. here. Yeah, we are glad you're here. Some of you, if not all of you, I suspect, uh, could have been those that, that tuned in during the fireside chats, which begs the question... Yes. Um, why replace the fireside chats with this? It was what, such a good thing. Different? Why change yeah, yeah. the... Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, you know, I think Alan explained it really well over, over the weekend and, and, and on Wednesday as well, uh, that the fireside chats came into play in large part because he, he made it happen <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, we, we went into that COVID-19 uh, season and we needed a way to connect with y'all. And we wanted to be in your homes and, and encouraging you and strengthening you and obviously the Lord doing that. Uh, and Alan kind of saw that all the way through and he was here every day uh, with Josh, our sound people, and um, just making sure those went on. And so uh, kind of moving out of that season of, of emergency, uh, but feeling, still feeling like many of you uh, wanted to still have that daily connection with refuge and with our pastors and 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 getting that encouraging word and so uh, we kind of just being sensitive to that it felt like hey well let's let's call it something different let's make it fresh and new and let's still be in each other's homes yeah exactly so the 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 need for that the the need for an encouraging word and refreshment and some of the things we're going to talk about here in the next couple of minutes as to what these will look like. Um, that's constant, but if it's always revolving around a crisis mode, uh, over time, um, it, it just, that, that, that wears thin. And, and so kind of moving it out from the crisis mode to just day-to-day -day life, refuge daily. This, this is life this side of heaven, and, um, and, and the need is there, as always, for us to encourage one another. Uh, and this has been a vehicle to, to do that. So as Jeff said, we carry it on with a slightly different bent now. So yeah, yeah. And, and, and kind of a new look. I mean, this is our this is our new logo. So it's cool. it's definitely got a, a new look, uh, but also maybe some some new fresh things that we're, we're planning on doing. Yeah, uh, we've talked about. In fact, uh, the idea is next Monday. So at this time next Monday, uh, Michael, our worship leader here at Refuge, is going to is going to play some songs, play some music and mm -hmm. some some new songs as well. And so uh, come back and join us next Monday for that, but just some new ideas that we've had yeah. that we could use this time for. Exactly, yeah. So that's totally different, right, than the Fireside Chats. We never did that before. Uh, we'll continue to have an encouraging word often, uh, but again, there'll be times when it is music as opposed to a, a word, a devotional thought from, from Scripture, but that will be the primary uh, vehicle for these, right? It's just yeah. that uh, a devotional thought from the Word of God. And, and ideally, uh, it kind of relates to what we were talking about um, a few weeks back on Wednesday nights uh, before resonance and, and, and the work of the Holy Spirit. And one of those gifts of the Holy Spirit is, is that the gift of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians 14, Paul talks about, he said, I mean, I'd, I'd just much rather see people with that gift than, than tongues, which is great for prayer, but, but just that prophetic word, a timely word that, that builds up and yeah. it encourages uh, God's people. And that's what we hope in, in those times when we provide those devotional messages that they would build up and they would encourage uh, us in, in, in our walk. So, so we got that, some music, music, a, a prophetic word. Wilson Wednesdays, Wilson. still going to happen. Done still, deal. They're still yeah, doing just it. Just mark your calendar. It's happening. <laughs> yeah. Every seven days. That's right. Yeah. And I Wilson would just Wednesdays. say that's kind of, for us, uh, it's, it's, we, we want to actually, we'd love to hear from you. I see some of you, I, I know Bree's watching here. Uh, Elizabeth is watching here. Um, we'd love to get ideas from you about what you guys want to see and what you guys want to hear. Uh, we've got a pastoral team. Just, I just think they're awesomely gifted. Yeah. Uh, they can preach, they can teach, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you want to know more about some other aspects of refuge. And, and so maybe we'll just open it up for that. So, but we need to hear from you. So if you would, uh, just text us, email us. Uh, tell us when you bump into us here in the hallways of Refuge of what you would like to see, uh, maybe with uh, uh, Refuge Daily. Uh, give us some ideas, and, and we'll, we'll be apt to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the other things that we talked about adding uh, when Jeff and I met earlier today 
was testimonies, and he was just sharing the fact that in, in a home group that he's part of, a connect group, that, that testimonies are so powerful, which they are. I mean, scripture is, is filled with them. In fact, I was reading this morning this is Paul's testimony as he shared it up at the Temple Mount uh, in Jerusalem, but they're powerful, and so we'll probably throw some of those in as well, testimonies from different people, so you can hear that, the story of how the Lord grabbed a hold of them. So testimonies, uh, and then maybe an occasional a fun anecdote, keeping it light, and, and you had one that you sent me this I've morning. Got one. Yeah, was, yeah, that was actually pretty good. So, are you ready to? Uh... Yeah, I. So, I just to preface this, I, I saw this floating around on the internet, and I thought, man, this is so perfect. And I uh, actually used it last night, Sunday night, uh, at the Sunday night service. And I thought, you know, it really does tell a little bit about the, a look into the church in this season. And so, uh, I wanted to share that with you. I think Josh will bring it up here for me on the screen, and uh, here we go. I'll, I'll read it to you, and let's see if that, uh, if that comes up. I'll read it off of my screen. There it is. So you're looking at it right now, but here's what it says, essentially. Uh, church member number one says this, Pastor, why in the world are you reopening church services so soon? Church member number two says, Pastor, why in the world did you ever shut down the church services in the first place? And, and, and Alan can attest to this. We've heard both of these things. Uh, moving on, church member number one says, Pastor, you don't seem to care about the struggle of minorities. Church, uh, per church member number two, Pastor, why haven't you been more supportive of the police? We certainly heard both of those voices. We did, we did. And uh, keep in mind, these are, these are chronological, right? So the first, it's, it's weekend. You week know, number three. Yeah, and then, so the next weekend. Week number we two, had, here's yeah, week number okay. one. Yeah. Church uh, member number one, require, uh, require masks. Pastor, clearly you don't care about human lives if you don't require masks. Church member number two, require masks? Question mark. Pastor, clearly you don't care about human liberty. And, and, and then going back to this last week, we, we had the, the topic of, of singing in church and worshiping in church or not. Or, and, and that was a, a hot issue. And, and I would just say to you, um, you probably fall on one of those two sides. Uh, more than likely, as I read those, you thought, well, one of those is right. <laughs> Each one of those weeks, you picked one of those and you thought, that's the right opinion. That's the right way. And because oftentimes, well, our opinions are always right. If, we're, if there are opinions, uh, we've put our own thought into it. We've done our research. And, and oftentimes we think that's the right opinion. And, and I would just say from a perspective of, of trying to lead, guide, and shepherd, um, and, and, and we're, we're, we're godly men seeking after the Lord. Pastor Bill is a godly man seeking after the Lord. And, and we try to do it with as much humility and wisdom and knowledge as we possibly can uh, and making decisions out of those things. And, and quite frankly, if you looked at that list, uh, you would see uh, at, you were going to offend one person or the other, right? That one opinion you would take and you would take the church in a direction. There's another side of people that would say, well, I don't agree with that. Um, and so the, then the question really becomes, as, as a person who is living in the church in this season, uh, we believe God is sovereign and we believe that God has put us here for this reason, then what should my heart be? Uh, what, what, where should I go with that? Because I'm, I'm getting angry and I'm getting frustrated because they chose a different path. Uh, then what's my position as someone who is a part of the refuge family or, or I'm going to church? And, and should I just leave? Should I go to the church that fits the one that I think should happen? And, and good luck with that, by the way, because every church is going through, it was on the internet, so every church is, is walking through that. But, but listen, uh, this is kind of what I've come down to and, and what my heart is being continually challenged with. This is from uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind. So he's talking to the church, and he's telling to that church, be of one mind. In other words, be unified. Uh, you might not agree opinion-wise of what things are going on, but uni be unified in Christ. He says, having compassion for one another, having compassion for the person that disagrees with your opinion. Love as brothers. Let love dominate. It says, be tender-hearted. In other words, walk in their shoes. Be willing to listen. Be tender-hearted with each other. And, and this one, he says, it says, be courteous. Be courteous with one another. And I feel like this is the season uh, for, for us to say, okay, I don't necessarily agree. Right? I can have a different opinion based on my research and what I believe is scientific. Right? Because you can, you can see the masks 
right? The, the idea of science. Both people are holding the idea of this is what's more scientific. Uh, and I know it's, my opinion is right. Uh, so, but an idea of my heart and my love and my compassion needs to be, and I'm going to pray for wisdom for the church, and I'm going to pray for wisdom and direction in the church. And so uh, I saw that on the internet, and I thought, oh, that is so, so perfect. Because we've been talking about that uh, in our staff, and, and we've been continually going back and forth over those things of what is the right thing. Yeah, that, that's, that's excellent. That's a, that's a great, that's an encouraging word from yeah. Scripture. That's timely. Uh, that, that in, in many respects, is, is the gift of, of prophecy right there. Um, in, the, in the forth telling of God's Word. Something I just want to add to that, Jeff, you mentioned about um, dealing with this in humility. Yeah. And it, it's occurred to me that you can test your, your own to some degree. Um, you want that, that humble attitude when you're expressing your opinion. But one way to test to make sure that there really is that, that right attitude is how are you retelling the, the story? So, for example, if you're reading what was up on the screen, if, if you're conveying that, is, is the side that you don't agree with, is there a little disdain in it when, when you say it? it it's kind of like what reminds me, and, and you have kids so you understand this, when, when, when siblings have a skirmish of some sort, when there's a disagreement or there's a fight, and, and then you ask them to tell the story. Well, what happened? <laughs> yes. What happened, son? What, and, and so you hear his version of the story, and then you ask his sibling what happened, and it's like something totally different. You're thinking, what, what, was this the same account? We, I'm hearing two totally different stories, because we, we taint the story that we retell to favor ourselves. We, we all do it. It's part of our, our, our old nature. Our, it's natural. That's not good, but it's natural, and, and we do that. Yeah. So just be careful when you're, you're saying, you know, there are some that will say this about the masks, and, 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 and the way you even say that can convey really if there's a humility there or it's not. It's I'm right, you're wrong. So um, again, think about when you were kids and you're just big kids now. So Yeah, and I just think I look at this too as, as a, it's really in so many ways a refining and a testing in, in the church, uh, in so many ways. It, it's in the area of, of giving, in the area of compassion, of love, and the way that we handle ourselves in this season, ultimately, a year from now, will matter. And, and I think mm -hmm. some, of it, some of it in my mindset is, because uh, we all are wrestling with things, and, mm -hmm. and I think in, even in personally within us, there's a strengthening that God is doing, a resolve that he's giving us to say, we'll keep walking, we'll, we'll keep walking. You don't agree? Uh, someone said this thing, Jeff, compassion, love, mm -hmm. keep walking. And a year from now, when you resolve through some of these things, and, and I think I just get the image of, of just the gold tested by fire and, and the dross going to the top and the cleaning off of that dross, there's a, there's a healthier and a stronger church uh, that walks through this. But it doesn't have to be that way. I, I think these things that, that Peter writes is, is unity, love, compassion, tenderheartedness, mm -hmm. being courteous to one, that those things actually matter. What we yeah. choose to do right now in the season matters mm. and is what at the end results in, in a healthier and stronger church. Yeah, amen. That's yeah. the eternal stuff. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, summary point that, and Jeff uh, kind of summarized this earlier today, something you said, and I jotted it down, I've got it here in my iPad, um, that you said that, that these are to provide, and hopefully this is the case today, provide a little break uh, from, the, from the normal sea of, of the day, a moment to take your mind off of what's going on all around you and to fix your mind on, on uh, the Lord. So um, that's a great objective, and, and we pray that these Refuge Dailies, Monday through Friday, uh, at noon, we'll, we'll do that, that very thing. So. And I see people who are on Facebook right now that we love, that are part of it, um, that are connecting with each other. So, so keep doing that as yeah. well. It's that opportunity to take that lunch break in your lunchroom or wherever you're at uh, and just get away for, for 15 minutes and just yeah. kind of look through and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to connect with some refugees and, yeah. and, and get this. And, and Lord, just pour something into me so I can go back to work or back to my day uh, encouraged. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, you want to close us in prayer? We're just yeah. about hitting that time. So. I'd love to. Yeah. Lord, there is a reason why uh, we're here today. Uh, Lord, there's a reason why you started the fireside chats uh, two and a half, three months ago. 
Um, Lord, there is a reason why. And, and here we are. We sit here and we believe uh, that in the future, there's going to be a lot of encouraging things that come from this time, this Refuge Live. Uh, Lord, I know that you are going to put some, some people up here that are going to speak and encourage somebody during the day to hear those words, those exact words that they needed to hear. That's going to happen, Lord. Then you're going to provide some brevity and, and some humor. And, and next week on this time, on Monday, Lord, you're going to provide some worship. Uh, Lord, there, there's just so many ways that you're going to use this tool of Refuge Live. Uh, Lord, we're excited about what you're going to do. Uh, Lord, help us to be faithful and wise in the way we manage it, the way we move it forward. Um, Lord, give us insight that we need. And Lord, would you be with the church in this season? Uh, Lord, would you continue to be with the church in this season? Strengthen us. Lord, as the enemy, I can imagine, would love to pull the church, not just refuge, but all churches that are walking through some of the same exact things, would love to pull them apart. Lord, would you just strengthen them? Would you turn it back on his head, the enemy's head, and, and come out on the other side of this with a strong, united, fruitful church? Lord, we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. We pray the Lord will bless the uh, remainder uh, of your day as you walk it out with him. Bye-bye.